Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q4 of the bi weekly contest 40 minimum number of removals to make mountain, mountain away. Um, so this one was a little bit of a weird one for me. Um, I actually knew how to do it right away, but I was just reading the problem for a long time because I wasn't super sure. But the short answer is dynamic programming. And, and when, when you look at the constraints, it kind of gives it away a little bit. Um, because given n, you know that you could do something n squared pretty easily. Um, and that's basically what I did. Um, I basically look at this as um, a longest, or uh, so a dynamic program problem is longest increasing subsequence um, that I prefer, uh, you know, you should familiarize yourself with. I would say that's a prerequisite for this problem. But once you have that, then it becomes, uh, you know, sim you could kind of from that, derive this one which is uh longest decreasing subsequence which is obviously the same as increasing except for that it goes downwards um and then from that let's say you have that lego piece let's say that you have puzzle that you have that piece to solve your puzzle well then what is it right then after that it's just a brute force um because now for you can check for each index okay if if we start at this index what is the longest decreasing sequence to the left and what is the longest decreasing sequence to the right? And and once you do that math, you're able to, um, yeah, you're able to kind of calculate the components from, from that, right? Or the answer from those components. Because for example, here uh, for six, um, you could look at, you know, it's five and two. So then the longest decreasing sequence is three, including the six, if you want to do the math that way. Uh, and because of that, you, you just have to subtract out the the, the, the pieces that are not in the lo longest decreasing sequence, right? And, and basically for each index, you brute force on that. So it's a very brute force E dynamic programming longest decreasing sequence algorithm. And I kind of even implemented it in a kind of a weird way, to be honest, but, and we'll go over it together. Um, I find that for dynamic program prompt, it's easier to go over the code together, uh, especially when I do it with memorization. So let's do that. Um, and we'll go over the transitions together and the states as well. Um, I think I gave a little bit of a hint already with respect to, or maybe a part of the solution, but basically this is what I do, right? Basically I, I take the longest good left on the left and the good right on the, basically going to the left side, the, the longest, the best, longest decreasing sequence i kind of do a variation on it but but the transition is the same and then i do the same on the oops how did that happen i do it on the right and then i add them together and then i just take the min of those answers um and that's pretty much it for the brute force portion because we try for each index what ha if this index was the mountain peak what is the answer for this index right so that's basically what this gives me and then we just have to answer the questions you know uh, um one by one and you could actually use one function but i i was lazy so i did it with two functions but good going to the left um i also added a, a base case which that took a little bit of time to be honest oops uh which is that if it goes out of bounds then we return zero because that means that we've reached the end of it um we have this infinity value to begin with we start the next index as the index you know we're going to the left, right? So we're going index minus one, and then we just have a while loop, which is essentially a for loop. Um, if next index is our bounds, or if if the number, if the current, in, if the next index is smaller than the current index, well, then what does that mean, right? That means that we want to draw an edge from this index to this next index, and the cost of that is the number that you skip in the middle, right? So that's basically my my answer. Um, good of you know, let's say our next index is just this because now we're in the next index and the cost of jumping to that next index is how many spaces that we, we skip, which is just index minus in, index index minus one. You can kind of, uh, you know, on your own time, uh, figure out why that is true because, you know, it's just counting. Um, and then, yeah, and that's basically the recurrence. Um, and then you, and that's pretty much it. And on the right side, to be honest, it's exactly the same, except for it's going plus one on the index. Um, and, you know, it quotes itself and, and the cost function is now going the other way, but otherwise exactly the same thing. Um, cool. That's all I have for this problem. Oh, uh, let me go over the complexity. I forgot. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, the complexity. So this for loop, assuming that this is O of one and this is O of one, and because we memorize, we can assume that. Um, you know, this is going to be. Um, or maybe I could phrase it another way. Um, you know, we have O of n loops. We so uh, we have a loop of O of n. So th let's just say this is O of n, right? Uh, and we assume that this is all one or one because we, we memorize it or the cost gets amortized somewhere. So this is this loop is going to be all of n, right? Uh, in terms of the good left, and I'm just going to do one side because it's obviously the same on the other. We ask ourselves, well, index, how many possible inputs are there? Well, the number of possible inputs is just, you know, from zero to n, roughly speaking. So this is all, all of n. And how, how much work does each operation do? Well, we do have a while loop also going from zero to index, which is roughly speaking all of n. So, so, so each one does all of n work. So together in total work, total work per input. So total work is equal to work per input times the number of possible inputs. So that's going to be all of n squared as a result. So this entire thing in total, in aggregate, is going to be n squared. And given that n is just a thousand, this is very um, sufficient and good enough time for for the function. And of course, by symmetry, you can figure out the, that good right also has the same complexity, also n squared, and that the entire algorithm ends up being n squared in total. Um, cool. Uh, that's all I have for this problem. You can watch me solve it live during the contest. And oh yeah, so I did get a wrong answer, so it cost me five minutes because uh, I thought you start from from index zero to the last element, but it turns out that you start from the first element to the, the second to the last element. So so yeah, so that's basically what I got a wrong answer to. Because if you have, if your test case is something like a decreasing array five, four, three, two, one, it actually wants you to start from here and then subtract this one uh, instead of just starting from the five and then going down. It is what it is. Eight five minutes. Uh, that's all I have for this problem. You can watch me solve it live during the contest now. Bye bye. Uh, okay. Whew. And it's a thousand. Be strictly okay. Square up there. Three times zero, otherwise.
this real quick. That's probably not right. Hmm. Yeah, fast enough. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, if it's going to be time limited, I'm going to be upset. Okay, well, that's just different type of upset. Uh, why is that two? Oh. It has to be not from zero or my okay, that is silly, but okay fine. Uh. Come on, come on. Okay. That was a silly mistake though. Uh, hey everybody, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, ask me questions because that's the only way I'm going to know how to answer them in the, in the future. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, and I will see y'all next forum. Bye-bye.